Has there ever been an artist or band that you absolutely loathed, you know, when you were younger, that years later you came to appreciate? Coming up, a classic 70s group who everybody seems to love, or seem to love, except for me. I break down the greatest songs, and I tell the stories behind them, and I share how through my dad, I learned to truly appreciate their artistry and discovered the magic of their compositions. Coming up next on Professor of Rock, brought to you by Zenny Eyewear. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. If you are passionate about music, the greatest music ever, you're going to want to subscribe so you don't miss out. We are now at Daily Channel. Now, I think I've mentioned this before, but my earliest memories of music were because of my dad. You know, he introduced me to the Beatles and Neil Diamond, Crosby, Stills and Nash, Billy Joel, the Beach Boys, Motown, so many others. And then I discovered Casey Kasem's American Top 40. I listened to that every week. And between that and my dad, that was my early music education. Now, I'm sure you all had similar experiences with your parents. Our parents pretty much controlled the radio dial in the car when we were young. So we were at the mercy of their tastes. Now, I was really fortunate because my dad loved great music. But once I started becoming you know, too cool for school, as every kid goes through, there were artists that my dad loved that I hated. This is how I felt about Bread and David Gates. I just couldn't open my mind to it. I detested it. I remember they had this episode of Wonder Years where Kevin gets the new Bread album from Winnie Cooper for Christmas and he acts like he loves Bread but he secretly loathes it. And I remember I was watching it with my dad and I was laughing at that. And you know, my dad just smiled at me and he said, you know what, go listen to Baby I'ma Want You with an open mind, the whole song. And tell me after that that you don't love bread. You won't be able to do it. They're amazing. Now, I just rolled my eyes and shook my head. But later that week, I was driving to school. I was going through a rough patch. I think there was this girl that I really liked, and I was kind of feeling down. And my tape deck in my car wasn't working, so I was flipping through the radio. And wouldn't you know it, Baby I'ma Want You comes on the radio. I couldn't believe it. I thought... You know, I was thinking maybe my dad had set me up somehow, and I just like, oh boy, I kind of smiled, and I was about to turn the dial. And all of a sudden, I hesitated, because this warm and angelic vocal from David Gates was sort of resonating with me, especially the words, baby, I'm gonna want you, baby, I'm gonna need you. You're the only one I care enough to hurt about. My mind was like, that's pretty good. By the time the second bridge came around that David is singing in that beautiful falsetto, I was right there singing along with him, every word. It was like that scene from Tommy Boy when the Carpenters come on and Chris Farley and David Spade are pretending that they don't absolutely adore Superstar. And by the end, they're singing to the top of their lungs and they're crying, it's a great scene. But that's all it took for me. I realized that with Bread, there was something really special there. And I hate to admit it, but my dad was right. So I snuck his bread CD, because I didn't want him to say, you know, I told you so. And I started listening to some of the other songs. And I got to tell you, within about an hour, I was a true believer in the mellow magic of bread. I mean, the calming force of bread soft rock music is a man-made wonder that is as soothing as a summer sunset or as tranquil as a gentle flowing waterfall. And all these years later, I've discovered that listening to a song by Bread is the best medicine to get rid of stress and anxiety. Now, Bread formed in 1968 with David Gates, Rob Royer, Jim Gordon, and Jimmy Griffin. Mike Botts replaced Jim Gordon on drums in 1969, and Rob Royer was replaced in 1971 by Larry Nechtel as the band's bassist, keyboardist, and harmonica player. Now, after their self-titled debut album yielded no hits, the band went on a serious tear. They had four consecutive gold albums, not counting the five times platinum Best of Bread album that came out in 73. Now, between 1970 and 1973, they released 11 top 40 hits. So a murderous recording and touring schedule, along with tensions between Gates and Griffin, split up the band in 1973. 
Jimmy was an important contributor as a writer and a vocalist on many of Bread's album tracks, but he was largely overshadowed by the genius of frontman David Gates. The mortal blow for Bread's breakup in 73 was when all the band's instruments and their entire sound equipment were stolen before they were set to play a sold out concert in Salt Lake City, Utah. Bread reunited in 1976 and had their last top 10 hit together in 1977 when Lost Without Your Love peaked at number nine on the Billboard Hot 100. Now the distinctive sound of Bread was achieved by a talented collaborative effort. But let's be clear, David Gates was not only the master of the group, he is arguably the maestro of the musical genre known as soft rock with a voice that gently massages the senses and makes you long for, you know, the touch of a loved one. I mentioned the Carpenters earlier. Well, David's affecting vocals are akin to the mesmerizing appeal of Karen Carpenter. They have something in their voice that is undeniably welcoming, warm, and angelic. David Gates has a unique quality that very few singers possess. It's really a sincerity and a serenity that brings peace and contentment in a world that is anything but. Bread has a long list of songs that I love, but after much contemplation, here is my Bread Fiver. Number five, If. With this song, David Gates wrote a true pop standard. The song went to number four at the time, and it was the shortest title to hit the top 10 in the history of the charts until Prince took his song seven to number seven in 1993. It is one of the timeless love songs that would be on a short list of the most used songs at weddings. And it's been covered by everybody from Sinatra to Perry Como to Tom Jones to Dolly Parton and so many more. It's pure poetry from the words to the vocal. Number four, Baby I'ma Want You. A song David Gates initially attempted to compose on a piano, but after numerous attempts, to finish the song, it just didn't sound right, so David segued to the guitar, then raised the song a whole key to get the sound that he wanted. Those changes made the difference to turn Baby I'm Gonna Want You into a number two smash that went gold in 1971. This is the song that opened me up to bread. It's got one of the greatest bridges in a pop song ever. That falsetto is truly heavenly. Number three, 1972's Guitar Man. Now, after Jimmy Griffin and David Gates took a shot at playing the guitar part on the song to No Avell, Gates turned to Larry Nechtel and he added the wah-wah element to his guitar playing that really punctuated the song's sad story of a fading musician that is slowly losing his audience. Guitar Man is a song that any aging rocker can relate to, but the lyrics are so deeply relatable to the average listener because it poignantly chronicles the natural course of life. The crowd noise that you hear at the end of Guitar Man is a recording off an actual concert crowd yelling after an announcer introduces Jim Morrison to the audience at a Doors concert. True story. Number two, Make It With You. Bread's one and only number one song. It hit the top of the Billboard Hot 100 in 1970 and number five in the UK. David Gates sang lead and harmony vocals and played every instrument on the recording of this song except for the drums. I mean, from the beginning guitar strum, this song just puts you into a peaceful trance. It's just brilliant. And number one, Everything I Own. A beautiful retrospective ballad that David wrote in memory of his father. It rose to number five, on the Billboard Hot 100, number five in Canada, and number three on the US Adult Contemporary Chart. Now, like many of Bread's most popular songs, Everything I Own is highlighted by David Gates' perfect falsetto, especially in the last verse of the song with David singing the lyric, is there someone you know, you're loving them so, but taking them all for granted. You may lose them one day, someone takes them away, and they don't hear the words you long to say. Just poetry. This song means so much to me because my own dad was the one who encouraged me to give Brett a second chance. 
And my dad recently passed away. And I'll tell you right now that that song really resonates with me because I would give everything I own just to have him back one more time. <sighs> okay, woo, that's, uh, that's my bread fiver. What is yours? Please share below, share a memory. Was there an artist that you used to hate that you gave a second chance um, and you ended up loving them. You know, there's somebody that your parents liked that you didn't, and, and that came together. Tell us about that. And if you like this content, subscribe so you don't miss out. We have a Patreon. Click on that if you want to help us keep building this community. Help us keep the music alive. It's really important. Until next time, three chords and the truth.